I'm Coach Corey Wayne, and this is my video coaching newsletter. And the topic of today's newsletter is going to be Act Like a Stalker and You'll Get Rejected. I got an email here from a guy who was dating this gal that he seemed to be really into. Apparently, they met online. He's divorced, she's divorced with one kid. And basically, what happened was for whatever reason, he says that she thought that he broke up with her. So she writes him these really hateful, nasty emails. And then he figures, I'll let her cool off for a couple of days. And then he contacts her after that. And she ignored his text or his phone calls. And then he says in here that basically he thinks there's something that may have happened to her. So he like blows up her phone all day long. And then uh, I guess he continues to do this, and she's just ignoring him. And she basically tells him if he doesn't stop contacting her, she's going to pursue legal action. In other words, get a restraining order or whatever it happens to be. And the thing that, that I look at, and I see a lot, and it doesn't matter where the, whether the guy is 18 years old or he's 60 years old. I see men of all different ages doing these kinds of things and in acting in these kinds of ways that communicate neediness, insecurity, fear. And over the years, and all the, all the women I've personally dated, and obviously over the course of learning this stuff and interviewing hundreds and thousands of women on a yearly basis, a lot of them in confidence have shared with me that a lot of times when they first start dating a guy or going out with a guy, they'll purposely not return his phone call or his text right away. Why do they do that? Because they want to see how he reacts. They want to see if he has any kind of self-control. Because the hallmark or the calling card of needy, insecure guys, guys that turn into abusive boyfriends or guys that are stalkers, are guys that will leave a message and maybe a couple hours go by, she's busy or whatever, or maybe she didn't, you know, the, she doesn't call him that day, and she's figured, oh, I'll call him the next day. And then the next morning, he's blowing up her phone. Hey, did you get my message? Blah, blah, blah. And he just keeps doing it. And he keeps, he keeps chasing her, and he never gets her an opportunity to start calling him. And all it does is communicate that he doesn't understand how attraction works. He's obviously not very successful with women. And if he's not successful with other women, then it must mean that he's not a very good catch. And if he's not a very good catch... Obviously, she should reject him, and that's nine times out of ten what happens. But when I, when I look at my coaching clients and I look at the emails that I get from guys, the biggest thing that, that just absolutely ruins a guy's chances is when he leaves a message, either a phone call message or he sends her an instant message or an email or a text, is not giving her the space and the time to get back to him. And as I wrote about my book, I, I did this when I was younger as well. I would get insecure and I would get needy and I'd be worried that I had done something or I'd upset her because I hadn't heard from her or she hadn't called me or whatever it happened to be. And then I'd call and get her on the phone and I'd throw up all over her, all over the, through the phone basically. And, you know, then I, I hang up the phone walking away feeling all good about myself, but I didn't realize at the time that she's hanging up the phone going, oh, that guy's... Yeah, I'm not going to call him again. He's really needy. He's really insecure. He's weak. Oh, another potential stalker. That's basically what the type of thing that goes through a woman's mind. And so if you leave a message for a woman, you must wait for her to call you back. Even if it's a day, two weeks, or two months, whatever it happens to be, you got to leave a message for her, Especially when you've done a lot of things wrong and you've communicated to her through your actions and your words that you don't have any emotional self-control or that you're needy or weak or insecure or that maybe you did things acting like a stalker. And so what happens is, is when you make a woman feel uncomfortable, she's going to back away. And when she doesn't hear from you, maybe it's a couple of days or whatever, and you, you don't like jump all over like the most guys do that she normally rejects, then she thinks, oh, well, maybe I, it was just me. Maybe I just... Maybe I soon assumed something and I was wrong about him. And so what happens is the comfort level and the safety level comes back after a few days of not talking, not hearing from you. And then she picks up the phone, calls her, shoots you a text. But if you answer the phone, you go, why the hell didn't you call me back? Why has it been three days? 
you know, what a lot of guys tend to do is they communicate their irritation through the phone, and then right there, you fucking lost. You just totally blown it because she's calling you because she's thinking, oh, maybe they, I was just being silly and there was something wrong with me, and there's really nothing wrong with this guy. And then she calls you and you're pissed off because it's been several days before you get back to where maybe she was out of town or whatever, maybe she got sick. And before she can even tell you what's going on, you're all pissed off at her because she hasn't called you. And then after you express your anger, then you're like, hey, you want to go out for dinner? Hey, and she's thinking, this guy's, you know, like, oh, I'll get back to you. You know what? I don't know what my schedule's going to be like. You know, I'll call you next week. And then next week comes and goes, and they don't hear anything. The guy's all pissed off, and then he starts sending her nasty emails. And this is typically what happens. And these are women that they had a total great chance with, and they just blew it because they were a dick on the phone or they couldn't wait for her to get back to him at, at her convenience and like i say all the time you got to let women come to you if you don't do it you're going to ruin their safety and level of comfort with you and it's going to cause her level of romantic interest in you to plummet so i'm going to go through a couple things here in this uh email and he says hey Corey, i'm a big fan of yours i'm loving your videos all the way I met this amazing woman online and we met in real life. We started a relationship. I'm divorced and she's divorced with one son. After months of our relationship, he doesn't say how many months, she confessed that she was still married to her husband, although I suspected it due to inconsistent stories. And I would stop you right there and say, dude, that is a major fucking red flag. You start dating a woman and it's several months or at least a month, and she puts on her dating profile online that she's single or divorced, whatever, when she's really still married to her husband and inconsistencies in her stories. So she's purposely hiding things and lying to him. That's not a good way to start a relationship, dating a woman who's lying to you from the get-go. Because then you got to wonder, well, what else has she lied to you about and not really told you about? I mean, she could be living with this guy and just wanting to have an affair. I mean, you just... You never know what you're getting yourself into when you just you see things like this and you never bring it up when you hear little inconsistencies. But what typically most guys do is they project their high interest and they just ignore all the bad signs. And that's a huge one. The girl's a liar. And obviously she's lied to you a number of times about this to cover it up. I believed her when they said that there was nothing between them. Even more, she told him about us. I come from a very happy background and her from a troublesome family. Again, that's another red flag. You come from a healthy, happy household, or so you say, and she comes up comes from a basically a fucked up one. She was raped at age 15 and recently started to remember past things like being molested at age 5 by her own uncle. This and more things shaped a troubled mind with abandonment issues, low self-esteem, and she decided to live in her own hell. The thing I gotta point out is like, dude, it's not your job to be her shrink or to fix her. That's a bad way to go. Sounds corny, but it's, he says, yet yeah, this is the most amazing, despite all these fucked up things about her, this is the most amazing woman I ever met in my whole life. Sounds corny, but my true love. And I would say that you're acting dopey and you're not paying attention to any signs or the actions or the red flags that you're seeing with this particular woman. She's going to therapy and has started to recover her own value, sharing with me more and willing to have a future together. She told me she was not happy in her marriage, but that I brought her stability and happiness. I felt it. Last week, she thought I ended the relationship and got upset. She sent me hate emails, and I didn't reply to let her cool off. After two days, I contacted her to find her distant, aggressive, and not wanting to know more about me. I panicked, thinking she might hurt herself, maybe my own paranoia, and kept calling her, although she didn't pick up a reply to my emails. And I'd say you're bullshitting yourself a little bit here, and, and basically what happened is, she, like you said, she wanted nothing to do with you, and you started chasing her and calling her and, and being like a psycho stalker. And so I don't know what you said to her on the phone, but if she's pissed off and upset with you, the way you always handle that is with charm and with humor and if she says, I'm, I thought you broke up me, I'm really upset with you. And you say, oh, baby, don't be silly. Why would I, why would I do something so silly? I mean, we, had, we have such a great time together. As a matter of fact, I can't wait to see you again. Just always want to be sweet. You always want to be charming. Nothing gets under your skin. You remember, you're the, you're the mountain. Nothing moves you. Nothing shakes your confidence. Nothing can diminish you except 
yourself. But you let the fact that you didn't hear from her and you lost your cool. And so here, here's where he says, Today I was threatened with legal action if I don't stop. I did stop, but not for her fear to legalities, but rather to respect her decision. I mean, you hear what he just said? It's like, oh, I don't give a shit about getting thrown in jail for becoming a stalker. But, you know, I, I just want to respect her decision. I mean, that's it's just, in, it's like you're not paying attention to reality. That's what tells me what's going on is you're projecting your high interest onto her and you're not paying attention to the fact that it sounds like she's probably had low interest and there was probably more things going on under the surface that you didn't know about. I'm not even sure if she got back with her husband. I'm left in the wild wondering about everything. Does she love me? Why all of a sudden change? I know she was the happiest with me. And I got to say to that, I mean, really? I mean, because her actions are saying, dude, I don't want anything to do with you. And by you calling her and blowing up her phone constantly, I mean, that's just that's something like a psycho would do. That's just a bad way to go. I know she really loves me, but I'm so confused about what to do next. You should do nothing next. She threatened you with legal action. I mean, hello, McFly. Leave the girl alone. The best thing that you can do at this point is I know you feel like shit and I know it hurts like hell, but you have to let this girl go. You got to let your failures go and you got to move on so you can start meeting and dating other women and practice your skills. You can't contact her again ever, period. I mean, because, I mean, who knows? Maybe she, this girl's totally whacked out, and in a few weeks she'll call you like nothing ever happened. Maybe she suffers from passive aggressive disorder. I mean, I dated a woman that was like that, and things would be going great in our relationship, and she would just totally fuck things up, create a, a bunch of drama and a bunch of problems just because she became fearful that I may break up with her or that it may not work out. And so she would just wreck things to head it off at the past because she figured, well, it's not going to work out eventually, so I might as well just fuck it up now. And she would just leave it and she would know that she's fucking it up and it's her fault and she would do absolutely nothing to fix it or solve it. It was up to me to resolve things. And so this woman that you're talking about is not a good candidate. So go about your life, practice what I teach with the other women so you can improve your skills and improve your confidence and also improve the quality of the women that you date so you can attract a woman who's healthy and not totally emotionally fucked up like it sounds like this girl maybe a little bit but at the same time it's like you got to be realistic and you got to look at what a woman does and not what she says and even though she said she was in love with you and all that or she cared about you wanted a relationship you gotta understand when women say things it, they're talking about how they feel in the moment and if that was a week ago or a month ago or two weeks ago whatever it happens to be and you've been doing everything wrong since then she can go from a few days or a few weeks ago wanting to have a relationship with you to not wanting to have anything to do with you because she rejects you.